On the eve of Diwali, government has announced excise duty reduction on petrol and diesel. Excise duty on petrol and diesel have been reduced by 5 rupees and 10 rupees. So, 5 rupee cut on petrol, 10 rupee cut on diesel excise duty. This is a big step, finally. And here at Mirror now, for days now, day after day after day, actually for weeks now, we've been talking about the high fuel prices. We've been bringing you voices of citizens, we've been bringing you voices of businesses, voices from the transport department, we've got you experts, economists, journalists who've spoken about the multiple effect that this kind of high, sustained high fuel price will have. And now, the government on the eve of Diwali has decided to give us some relief. Actually, a significant part if you look at the excise duty bracket and we're going to bring you those numbers in just a bit. But let me also say good evening to Professor Raman Agarwal, Director of IIF and Madhavan Narayanan, Senior Journalist, joining me this evening on this, uh, you know, big development that's come in. We'll also get voices of people in just a bit. Our reporters from across the country will join us with those reports and reactions from people. I only wish it had come a little sooner. Uh, and, and maybe then the high prices wouldn't have dampened the festival spirit for many people. Nevertheless, it's here. Mr. Madhavan Ranan, what is your view? The, why is this decision being taken today? Many seem to be connecting it to the bipolar results. Personally, not Mr. Ranan, I think you're on mute. You... Oh, wait, hang on. Okay, or, or some bit of an audio problem there. Can you hear me now? Yes, better. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, the fact is that we are on to an election season in both Punjab and Uttar Pradesh in a while from now. We have by polls, but personally, I'm not too impressed by it for two reasons. One is that I'll wait for you to show me how this is significant because on the face of it, it seems like a token effect. And also because GST uh, collections are looking good, maybe the government thinks it has elbow room to play with. But I personally think it's just a token Diwali gift. Unless it is sustained in a way, it's going to be difficult. Having said that, let me say that there has to be a policy of aligning Indian fuel prices uh, with the world when there is a surge. But it has to be done in a systematic manner that doesn't affect all sections of the society, particularly the poorer sections. I still feel the government doesn't have an organized policy and it is very ad hoc. That is not very comforting because people need a sense of visibility for a proper uh, understanding so that they can manage their budgets. And uh, that is where I'm concerned. But I'll wait for you to show how it is significant because if tomorrow, uh, go world oil prices, like say the Brent benchmark goes up, I would expect some kind of, a, you know, uh, okay. action uh, from the government. Right, okay. So now, so actually, whether it's significant or not, of course, is open to interpretation and how you see it versus anybody else may see it. Let me just put out the numbers as we've, you know, uh, uh, we've got it. The breakup just before this announcement came in of the overall price that a consumer pays showed that for Petrol, for example, in Delhi, the base price was 47.28. The base price for petrol for, for a consumer in Delhi would have been 47 rupees, 47.28 rupees per litre. What is the price that the consumer was paying as of 1st November, uh, 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 before this announcement came in, was uh, 109 rupees. Now, that is where the cut has taken place. So, if I look at the math, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Aman Agarwal, the cut brings down petrol prices by 4.5% and diesel prices by 10%. So we need to see how much of uh, what was the extent of excise duty and how much of that has been removed. The excise duty will now come down from 32 rupees or something to 27 rupees uh, as far as Delhi is concerned. To your view, uh, Amar Agrawal, does, is this a big one or could more have been done considering the impact of these prices? You see, there are two factors to this. One is a psychological factor. I think uh, from that perspective, certainly it is a relief to a large number of people as well as more of a gift as you announced it in the initial uh, stance when you opened the talk today. Now, that is one component to it. The second component, it will certainly percolate into some kind of a relief going forward. Now, that relief will happen not uh, in, in just a day because people will start buying this fuel and consuming it. And that will be over a week to 10 days when we'll start to feel. Certainly, as my colleague pointed out, that the concern is there. 
But that concern is not something which I am concerned with because the pricing has to be stabilized and it has to be regulated in a manner where the domestic price is not impacted. Fortunately, the government has collected about 5 lakh crore almost every year in the oil pool account based on the excessive charge of excise and other duties uh, on the oil and the diesel. So this certainly is a relief uh, to a large number of community and uh, will increase the profit margins of some. But to an end consumer, uh, except for those who get fuel filled up in their cars, the rest of them, you will not see so much of a price impact, uh, which may be observed because large number of corporates are buffering in reduced profits, which will, they will like to encash on those profits, uh, given this reduction which has taken place. Uh, uh, fair enough. So, but there are multiple aspects to it. For, uh, uh, for example, one is what you and I pay directly for fuel. Uh, where, of course, we will see this difference of 5 rupees and 10 rupees, a 4.5% cut and a 10% cut, uh, you know, relief which is coming in. Um, as far as the higher prices is concerned, that will probably take time uh, because the businesses have already witnessed that high fuel price levels for a while. The transport segment has been reeling under pressure. Many of the companies who actually held back or not increasing prices beyond a point will obviously not cut them right now. So I understand what you're saying, that some of the other things that we are indirectly also paying a higher price for, relief may not come in. Uh, but but uh, the way crude is moving and the way our prices for everything else is going up, will this be enough to give us that relief? For example, every day we're also seeing increase in uh, gas prices, uh, cooking gas uh, and even CNG. Uh, so that also has to be factored in. I mean, I can, I can already see people reacting to our conversation saying, oh, they'll cut it here today and increase it elsewhere tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No, I agree the fact that, you know, uh, this is not uh, something which is going to be any major impact on the inflation factor per se. Yeah. And then ultimately the end consumer will benefit overall. But certainly, as I said, this is a way going forward because we did not see any cut take place in the last two years. And this has become a cause of worry for a large number of economists, including the Reserve Bank of India, where the Reserve Bank of India was also, governor was also pointing out in its monetary policy that we need to bring about a check on this. The main effect will come if we introduce the, the oil in the GST, uh, which has been the mandate when the GST was introduced, but they did not do it then. Given the fact that the voting uh, ratio which they have, the, the current running central government has over and above uh, which is the voting right in the in the framework of GST Council, they do have that framework where they can actually go about introducing it and shifting it to the GST. If they do that, there would be a major impact and people, almost to the tune of almost, I would say, about 50%, uh, roughly speaking, yes. uh, would be there. And the people will get the relief, not only in terms of the product prices which we buy from the market, uh, whether it is you know vegetables or otherwise, or even the end consumer at the end of the day. And naturally, the companies also tend to benefit in their profitable ratios. So that will certainly impact. And fortunately, we have the buffer, as I said, roughly about last four years, five lakh crores have been accumulated per year, ranging to about 20 to 20 lakh crores, which has been accumulated in the oil pool account, which we suggested way back in 89 when Andy Tiwari implemented it. Right. And the government has the buffer. Secondly, we have one exchange reserve, huge one exchange reserve today, $640 billion, which is there with us which clearly is a safeguard factor for us in against any volatility which may be there. And also the rupee is under a strong stress to go up because of the foreign direct flows which are coming in. So that if the rupee appreciates, the, the effect of the oil prices, even in the international market, if it goes up, will be countered effect. Third, lastly, you see most oil, I would say about 98 to 99% of oil need of any country, including India, are purchased at Pack prices, forward traded prices, which are actually ranging between $55 a barrel to $65 a barrel. So in there, in any case, these contract prices are for a range of three to four years. Correct. Now, given that, when you're buying a large part of it from there, so there is no question of actually changing our prices on a day-to-day -day basis. When the oil, which actually is bought uh, three months back, comes into my petrol tank today. Okay. So after processing, shifting, moving in it. Right. Let me, let me, uh, uh, fair enough. Um, let me try and put this in perspective with another data point that the research team has just pulled out. Just this year, Mr. Madhavan and Ryanan, petrol prices have gone up by 26 rupees. 
Uh, so far, the reduction that happened because of the usual up and down that we see was only 5 rupees. So it went up by 26 rupees, the reduction was about 5 rupees and now this announcement of another 5 rupees. Similarly, in diesel, it went up by about 24 and a half rupees, 24.55. Uh, the cuts came down by about 10, 10 rupees and another 10 rupees which is happening now. Uh, so yes, maybe both of you, like as you say, not a significant yeah. one, but perhaps a lot more symbolic and messaging, especially in festival uh, time. Uh, yes, Madhavan. Uh, I think it's very important, Tanvi, that uh, petrol prices is essentially a middle class transport issue. Let's face it. It's not uh, all pervading uh, in the sense diesel is. So I would say that the diesel price cut is much more decent and significant because diesel has an across the board knock on effect on everything, especially vegetable prices and onion prices and stuff, which are both socially and politically more sensitive than let's say you the kind of car rides that you and I have, or you know, either in a two wheeler or a car. So the diesel price uh, hike is both socially and politically significant. Most important, it will give two uh, positive impetuses. One is that it might stop uh, manufacturers and uh, uh, traders from passing on some of the increased transport costs. Uh, this would have become inevitable had the prices excise not been cut. The other thing is this will also have a further impact on the RBI's monetary policy. So the RBI's can use this to hold back on any talk of an interest rate hike because bond yields with that symbol symbolize interest rate hikes are already uh, you know raring to go based on any inflation data so this has a, a, a sort of a virtuous circle at least for six months which is sort of time enough for the government to manage itself politically given the by-election results and the fact that they are heading into Punjab and UP however everything depends on how the world oil prices move you can't be uh, having the cake and eat it, eating it too. We have a budget coming up in about three months from now, so uh, more or less. So uh, we will watch this space, but it's a good elbow room for the government for the moment. Good elbow room for the government at the moment, politically speaking. And of course, you know, um, several of these decisions, uh, while economy has to be kept in mind, there's also much of politics uh, that, that, that also plays out and has to also be kept in mind. Um, now, here is the other question. Since we've mentioned the politics of it, Mr. Madhavan Aranan, do we expect and should there be pressure on states to also do their bit? Let me put it this way very bluntly, Tanvi, that states are in the, you know, you can always take a moral argument in this, you know, based on inflation and middle class and all. But the simple fact is that GST was such a magnificent and huge step taken forward that fuel price cushion was provided to the states to at a transition arrangement to tide over this whole thing the big question is whether the transition period or the honeymoon period is over or not politically it is not over economically uh, maybe dr agarwal and company will do some of the sums but essentially no state government ever likes the idea of letting go of revenue but we have come to a point of moral persuasion where states can be allowed to let go of some of the things. But the GST Council is essentially a federal body and state governments have more power than the central government in the GST mechanics. So we can only uh, compile a wish list and uh, let us see. Uh, the, it's going to be a political uh, battle of nerves between uh, telling states to cut the thing or and putting the blame of any further inflationary impact on them. So we will just be watching that, Tanvi, to see how much of this comes to economics and how much of it is politics. Agarwal, your view on it and not just, you know, of course, politics will be a part in there where some of the opposition parties may feel the pressure. I'm sure the Congress party in Punjab is going to feel the pressure now being one of the poll bound states. But economically speaking, do the states have the bandwidth also to cut price? The states certainly have the bandwidth to cut prices because even part of the share of GST goes to them. So it is not that they have no earnings at all. Second, a large number of other earnings <coughs> which the state has. And uh, they do have the elbow room here to go about giving that relief which the people need. And it should be a commensurate effect for both state and center. In any case, GST, as I said, 
the gst to the government uh, has been fairly strong in introducing some very uh, very very hard decisions in this country and given the fact that large number of states are run by the current central government so you know parties so in any case they do have that elbow room there also to go about introducing it in the gst despite the fact there is a voting system and then the voting base gives that leverage to the bjp to go about introducing it also now it's only a question of will with the, both the political parties at center and state to go about doing it and giving the relief which is rightly deserved it's a question of time now only when it should be done it has to be done in due course because this will be killing the economy and the growth which this economy really deserves if we do not go about introducing it in the gst Yes, but, uh, and again, uh, since we've spoken about it ad nauseum, you know, uh, it may sound repetitive in all of the conversations and the debates we've had, and too few have actually been part of many of those conversations, but I think it is important uh, to highlight that it's for, for us, uh, it's not just an issue of whether a person is able to f fill petrol in their motorbike or their car, but it's over on an overarching basis, how is it that it's impacting them for businesses? Now, if, if the businesses... Uh, are not able to pass it on to their consumers, then they take a hit as well. If 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 a restaurant guy who's just about started his business again with people coming in is not able to pass on the high price to his consumer, uh, then it is going to hurt him further. If the transport guy who also got hit badly during the pandemic and the lockdown is not able to pass it on to his uh, his uh, clients, then their business gets uh, uh, impacted badly. And all of those things, I feel, uh, uh, Aman Agrawal, were not being factored in. And I think repeatedly the conversation just becomes about gaadi kharidne ka paisa hai, to petrol dalne ka bhi paisa hona chahiye, kind of an argument, which I think we need to move beyond that. No, I agree with you. You know, it is a question of the, at the end of the day, the end consumer in overall fashion. It's not only both the producer and consumer, they have to be taken into account. Given the fact that they have started reducing it and hope they reduce it further down, uh, you know, if they do it, then we will see the benefits uh, of this reduction going forward to people at large. This particular reduction, as a matter of fact, will not see much uh, benefit going to the people at large as a, as a product consumption or otherwise. It, you know, the only relief, as you rightly pointed out, is only to the person who is getting the petrol filled in their vehicles. But that is only a very small relief as compared to the actual relief which is request, required where the prices of all commodities and products get adjusted. And that will be only over long term when these price reductions take place constantly. And that's where both the transporters and other producers will start benefiting and have a survival factor. And that's why I said the introduction of the, in the GST is not an option as of now before the government. It is something which is mandatorily and it is required that it needs to be done if we really want to see the growth impetus which both Narendra Modi, his government and various other economists have been talking about. I want to thank both of you for joining me. I know it was a little bit last minute, but this news was way too important for us to not address and get reactions on. So thank you so much for joining me on this conversation. The decision by the central government. Months, for months and months now, there has been pressure from the highest of the offices including that of the reserve bank of india's governor to the common man on the street saying give us some relief there needs to be some rationalization there needs to be some consolidation as far as the taxes on fuel are concerned of course everybody understands that if the crude prices are going up some amount of that will get reflected but look at the breakup of any city's fuel price and you will see how the excise duty and also then the VAT which is the what the state puts on, on on the fuel is such a huge chunk that you're actually paying almost two to two and a half times that of the price look at that the basic price is 47 rupees what you end up paying is 104 rupees in in in, in Delhi this is after the cut by the way so you are actually paying plus five 109 rupees, 110 rupees, even though the base price was 47. It was high time that this cut was announced. A lot more perhaps will need to be done, but at least the government has shown that they're willing to hear people and not just give us excuse after excuse for we need the money for the vaccine, to we need the money for COVID, to we need the money to fix a pothole on your road for everything else, all the other excuses that were given. This was a much desired step.